Hi, I'm Stephen Cronin. Welcome to another watercolour painting demonstration. And I'm showing you a photograph sent to me by Chris, um, who sent me this rather fetching view of Venice as he was uh, cruising down it. So I thought I'd have a go at this one today, but first let's have a quick look at the materials. I've got all my usual gear. We've got a uh, ultramarine, lemon yellow, Payne's grey, lizard in crimson. Raw sienna, burnt umber, light red, all cotton watercolours, water jar here. Got me a large one, rancid hake, uh, 15 by 11 Fabriano. It, there are, you'll see all the links in the descriptions if you want to see them. So, one quick last look at the photograph and let's get cracking. So, I'm going to start this with the big hake brush. And I'm just going to give it a good wetting all over the back, just so that the paper stretches evenly. And, uh, and anything I do in the sky here, it'll just soften up, and not be any or anything, anything like that. Now, looking at these colours, I'm, I'm well, uh, I'm seeing a little in crimson, a bit of raw sienna, uh, plenty of mud off the palette. And a bit of blue, so this is ultramarine, these are in crimson. I'm just going to brush that all the way down to the bottom. More blue, more water, more blue, more alizarin. And I'm just hoping that because I, I basically I'm trying to create that, that light effect moving down the the centre of the page. So let's, let's just see how I can get on with that. I'm just getting a bit more blue and a lizard in. I might introduce a little bit of a little bit of Payne's grey as well, just to really darken it up a bit. Bit of blue, bit of Payne's grey. And the, sort of, the darker I have to make the sides, the, the lighter it will appear. See how it's starting to lighten now? How it's light, lighten up in the middle. I'm starting to get that sort of reflection effect from the light in the sky. I'm trying not to have everything the same colour. I'm trying to sort of vary it a little bit. You can still be able to see a bit of the raw sienna in there. It, it's easy, it gets very easy to just have everything exactly the same colour and so um, if, if if you're not careful just looking the horizons about there so I, I think I'm fairly happy with that now um, maybe might have to if, just put a little little bit of cloud in the sky so have a little I'm trying to be quite subtle with these. I don't want to overdo it. A few on the other side as well. I might just leave it there. I don't want to go bar me. And just trying to darken. So obviously as the paper dries, it will, it'll go on darker and darker. But I, I, I don't want to. I don't want to go too bar me. Now, whoops! The paper stretched. So that last bottom clip didn't clip it very well. Let's just clip this back on. And I can pull this. Pull it tight now and get it flat against this piece of plywood. This is some dollops of uh, ultramarine. I ain't got to worry about that. That'll just be a feature of the painting. Um, nine times out of ten, if you faff about with it and try and improve things, you end up just ruining it. So I just, I just leave it now and just have them as a feature. That, that could be anything really. Um, so I'm just debating now whether to. Uh, dry it or put it on while it's still wet. I'm going to put it on while it's still wet I think. Um, and then I'll add the, the furthest buildings, put them in wet and I might dry it 
and then have, there's another sort of layer on the right hand side um, and then I'll put those in when it's dry things to make it a bit stronger so there's a sort of distant layer of buildings that are about there Too much, too much blue. I'll put a bit more lizard in there. So I want this the same colour, pretty much as the sky. Um, I better get on with it because the paper started to dry. Um, and then just do a few little. These upright bits are just like little buildings. Just I'm just trying to keep them fairly sort obviously small, they're pretty far away so you don't want them very big at this distance but it's just, just, just a little bit here and there, it just gives the impression of something happening in the distance and you just move that all the way along and again just a few little buildings there in the distance using the corner, being careful that I don't come down like that and catch the uh, paper and then some at all up there oops I did it then did I? don't worry that's going to be covered up so you can see we've got this distant building now, fairly light in so same colour as the sky now, just push it right back it's right the way back so next we've got another layer to go in there, but this time I am going to dry it, so I want this to go on stronger, so I want the paper dry. tight again and re-clip it right then I'm just going to dip I'm just dipping the corner of the brush into the wash just to loosen it all up maybe just a tad more and then again taking a bit of a bit of ultramarine a bit of alizarin crimson a bit of Payne's grey and I want this to be quite dark now because it was sort of I want it sort of silhouetted against this light in the sky so maybe just add more water and then just get on with it because when I, when I try and plan things too much I end up it's better when I don't think about it and I just bash it in sort of crash bang wallop style my preferred way of working um, when I deliberately sort of try and do it too deliberately like this I end up making it not as nice so now so I'm not worrying too much about the actual shapes of these buildings I'm just, just doing a sort of mishmash general So you can still, I don't want to get too high, you can still see that distant man behind it. And then, see the sort of, I'd say the main focal point is this, this tower thing there. I could use a smaller brush, a little flat brush, but I'm, I'm going to stick with the eight going. See that, it goes right up there. And I'll try and get it level. Just to loosen the paint up a bit more. So that sort of comes up there like that. And then stick some of these. I need to be careful, I am just catching the uh, the water bit. And you know, right, it's it just needs to come down slightly.
there sort of I'm gonna have to switch the little brush on it now just to just put some little little boat seal in there. So I'm just saying three colours, a bit of ultramarine, lizard in crimson, Payne's grey. Just the odd little little boat floating around here and there. things here and there we got Get this a bit higher. Just debating whether to just put some little what these look like little ripples. I think I'm gonna ruin it. I don't think it's better without the ripples on the water or not. So I'll, I think I'm gonna leave it as it is before I, uh, I was maybe gonna put some ripples in, I don't know. <laughs> Now I'll just pause it for a sec, just have a look at it from the back of the room. I'm, I'm going to leave it as it is, I think. I think I'm just going to leave that. Just, just a nice, simple rendition. So, um, thanks for seeing the photo, Chris. I, I, hope, uh, I hope I've done it justice. Um, I'm just going to stick my hand down there. So, let's put, a, let's put a mount on it and see what it looks like. So this is what it looks like with the mount on. Um, so if, if we look at the photograph again, and the obvious thing that each when you see this photograph for me, it's just like this bright light reflecting on the water. It looks looks perfect, really. And then just very simple buildings, sort of th just three layers really. You've got the distant ones, then these middle ground buildings, and then this. Uh, in the, the, the close to the foreground there. So to get the, the tones right, maybe this could have been a bit darker, but that's why I put the, the furthest one in while the paint was still wet. So it's the same tones as the, as the sky, so it pushes it right back into the distance. Then these middle ones, putting when the paper was dry so that they're darker, and I was careful just to leave a bit of that distant Distant building showing just just uh, just beyond. And again, putting the boats in nice and dark, just a, a sort of silhouette, even emphasises the light even more. Could have been a bit darker, maybe just a fraction more, maybe another tone in there some somewhere as well. Um, I do need a bit more practice with buildings, but for me, the the, the main thing I wanted to get right was this light effect. So. Started off a bit of raw sienna and lizard in crimson in the sky, brought the colour right the way down, and then just brushed in Payne's grey, lizard in crimson, ultramarine from the top in the sky area and up from the sides down below to create the water and keep the light in the middle of the scene. So everything in the photo, I've, I've pretty much tried to 
Um, I've, I've kept everything very, very sad. I haven't really changed anything, I don't think. All the basic elements are there. Just try to create a bit more texture in the sky with these clouds just drifting down towards the horizon line. So that's it for them for today. Thanks for watching. Um, keep practicing. Any questions, please ask. Thank, again, thank you again, Chris, for the photograph. Um, and I'll see you again soon.